On today's episode of Tall Garage, we talk about wiring. Don't let this spaghetti scare you. It's really not that bad. Stay tuned. All right, everybody. Welcome to Tall Garage. Now, today's video is about wiring, right? I'm gonna do my own standalone harness uh, for one of my engine projects. Um, you guys probably know it or not, go check it out. Links up here to Iron Duke, it's pretty cool. Uh, really the only reason I wanted to make this video today is I wanted to show off these cool uh, posters I got made. Yeah, see, they have all the pin outs for what every wire is. I got these from Vistaprint. I don't have a code for Vistaprint or anything, but these turned out really good. I like them. I think they're gonna help me uh, do this harness pretty well, right? So anyway, well, welcome to Tall Garage. We're gonna talk about how I'm gonna do this harness, yeah. On today's video, we're going to take this uh, stock LS harness and we're going to go over how I am going to attempt to prune it and make it fit better on this Iron Duke engine. Now this video isn't about the Iron Duke, it's really just going to be about me and how I'm attempting to prune this down. I've never done it before. I figured this harness would probably be a good candidate because someone's already been in it. They've already been, they've repinned the sensor it looks like. Not too sure what that's about, but so yeah. So uh, we're just gonna go over my attempt and what made it easy. I got a couple of simple tools. I guess I'll just talk about. I got this is actually a sewing tool. Uh, I'll put the link down below, but I'm gonna use it to cut all of the loom off of this. Uh, if you use a razor blade, you tend to nick wires and it can cause problems. Uh, this has a safety tip on it. You can just glide it right through the loom and it cuts it really good. I'll talk about more of this in detail, I suppose, later. And I just got uh, some tape and a Sharpie so we can like kind of mark things as I go out. I'm not sure if I'm going to get rid of the uh, trans harness yet, because this is gonna be manual, but we might keep it around just in case future use and stuff like that. A lot of this is gonna go, we're gonna have to do a little repinning. And like I said, I'll talk more about that in the video. So stick around and we're gonna get to it. All right, so this is the tool I was talking about. I made a couple of them. I actually bought these uh, separate, and I had a fine hand handle for them, and I glued them in. But just to show you kind of like what they're capable of doing, we'll get we'll get a piece of this harness. We'll start down here, I guess, right? All right, okay. So, like I said, usually every time I use try to use a razor blade on this, I end up I end up cutting a wire, which you don't you don't want to do, right? Oh, this is just coming apart pretty easy. But yeah, okay, down here. So we got some tape on here, right? And you just stick this, I guess this red uh, ball on it so you can't cut anything besides what you're doing. You just stick it in there and we'll see if we can get it. Yeah, and then you just slide it up and it just cuts right through it. So let's see if we can get through here, yeah. And of course, I gotta pick the hardest spot to do with a bunch of layers of tape, but. Once you get going, it just cuts right through that shit. And you don't gotta dick around peeling it. You don't gotta dick around cutting wires, nothing. So that's how I'm gonna handle all that. We're gonna get all this stuff off. And then we'll, once we get it all off and laid out on the engine, we'll start marking it out. We're going to make a lot of this shorter because we don't need, we don't, since, it's, since, you know, this is going on a custom engine or a custom application, we don't need a lot of this. Like we're going to get rid of four injectors. We're going to get rid of um, all the O2 sensors, but one, and we'll go over about doing all that later. And then we're going to, if we have to, we'll buy some new pins and then we'll repin everything shorter. So we don't have all this extra wire hanging out the back. But all right, I am gonna go ahead and just start stripping all this down and we'll come back in a little bit. Let's see if I can show you on here. Get started in there and look at that. It just peels right through it. No mess, no fuss, no cut wires. Beautiful. All right, so we got this thing peeled all the way down. I did peel it all the way down the connector because we are gonna be removing wires. Uh, nothing really too strange. This, these white wires though, someone must have spliced these in 
but this splice job looks really good so I don't know <laughs> usually I don't see that kind of quality on splice jobs but we'll have to like check all that to make sure it's going where it's going and it works now a couple things to remember here since we're putting it on a four cylinder we only need four injectors right so four of these injector uh let's say I think I don't, know, I don't remember where they are but four of them are going so we'll have four left and then the coil harness um, there's two coil harness, one for each side, and we only need one, so it would be going two. We will have to repin both the injectors and the coil harness, because the coil harness that remaining, obviously, is going to be for either the right bank or the left bank on an LS. So that means we'll have uh, two, four, six, eight on one side, and one, three, five, seven on the other side. We'll have to repin whatever side we keep to have one, two, three, or not one, two, three, four, but we'll have to repin it to keep uh, the injectors, uh, the, the, the cylinders we need to make this work. So I think what I'll do first, I'm going to start marking everything with uh, my tape and my marker. So I'll find all of my plugs and I'll mark what everything is. And then I will start uh, figuring out, I'll start laying it on here. And then we'll start getting rid of what we don't need. So we'll come back once I get a little bit further, fellas. Yeah, so just real quick, guys, I'm going to show you these off. I'm really happy with how they turned out. I messed up over here. That's why some of the numbers are missing on this side. It's not like that on that one over there. But I messed up. I'm the one that formatted it. So, oops. But, yeah, has 1 to 80. 1 to 80, huh? There's a lot of pins on these things. Um, it tells you what each one is. So, when I'm going through here and I'm repinning this V8 harness for this four-cylinder engine, right? It'll help me uh, figure it out. I got, And this is for the, it says right up there. The 03 to 07 P59 PCM, right? And I think uh, eventually I'm going to get ones made for the red blue, which is like uh, 01 to 03 or 2000 or 99. I don't know. But yeah, I'm going to get them made at some point too, but I'm doing, see I'm doing, can we see them? Can we, can we see them? Yeah, see that one's green down there, right there, green. Green, blue, really green, blue harness. Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about how I got all uh, the loom off this thing. I got some nifty tools. Uh, particularly this thing, which is like a seam popper for sewing. And I, okay, I'm gonna, I, I, I did cut one wire because I got, I got a little bit too ramroddy. So I did cut a wire of this, but that's it. Only one wire that I know that I cut of this on accident because I was getting rammy. So it worked really good and it made getting all that loom and tape off pretty easy. So we'll talk about that too. But yeah, uh, that's, what, that's where we're at. That's what we're doing. All right, guys, it's the next day. My phone went dead, so I called it a quits. Uh, let's talk about where what we got done yesterday. So we got all of the majority of the casing sleeving off our harness. We started laying it out on the engine where we know it's going to go. After that, I started figuring out what sensors were that I didn't know what they were. So we've done that. And now I've started depinning the harness. So the only thing you have to do to depin these is you need to take off the back cover here. And, there's, and I have mine right here. Now, I haven't quite figured out the trick to getting these off. I got one off without breaking it, but then the second one just didn't want to come off. So when I figured out the secret to getting these off, I'll let you know. And then the only other thing you got to take off is the little covers. They're sitting over there on the end of them green and blue things. And there's a little clip right there. You just push in with a screwdriver while lifting up one side, and then you push their clip on this side while putting a little tension on it and they'll pop right off so super easy and then you just push the pins through and then you can cut them or you can just push them back through you just lift this little tab up and just boop they come right out so super simple but yeah so that's what we've been doing we've been de-pinning things so so far i have a collection of stuff i've depinned. so like here is this was the evap uh sensor per cylinder whatever you want to call it we're not going to use that, so I, I took it out. And I left the pins on. I didn't cut mine. I left them on. Um, so I could reuse the wire if I needed it, right? So we got that out. Uh, and we got the whole injection harness that I didn't use. Because the other side, we're only using four cylinders. We only need four. So that's all out. Um, and then one of the coil harnesses out because again we only need four so that's all done and we're just going to keep working our way through it these big charts i got have been working out really well 
Although this kind of threw me for a loop because um, they go from they go from nine and they skip a whole bunch of numbers. So that kind of threw me off. But anyway, so we're gonna go and keep on doing that and get everything wired on the engine. Overall, this experience has been pretty, pretty chill, really. All right, fellas, we've pulled out everything I wanted to pull out. We got all the O2 sensors out, but one, I found a guide online that said I can tap the signal from bank one and put it in the bank two. So I, I'll still have, uh, where is it, closed loop working. So that's kind of cool. We're only going to have one exhaust coming off this thing. It's going to be coming off the turbo, right? So we put, we'll put my one in for the uh for the narrow band and we'll put one in for the wide band i'm going to put in and that'll be it so we'll just have the two closed loops should work and all that so that'll be gravy transmission stuff's all pulled out because we're just going to use either t5 or if i can find one like an nv 1500 they came in like the 2.2 s10s so all the transmission stuff ripped out for the most part um and i think that's pretty much it i mean i still gotta like route everything nicely you know but this really isn't that hard. It's really not. Uh... All right, fellas. So that's kind of like the over my overview of doing this. Never done this before. My first time tearing into one of these wiring harness like this. It's pretty simple, man. I don't be afraid of wires. I know a lot of you guys get weirded out by wires, but it's really simple. There's only a couple things I didn't really understand, which was. There's two plugs that like go into the interior, like the steering wheel and, and stuff inside. Um, which I think is really just like cruise control and stuff like that. So I gotta figure out how to get that, how to wire that out of the harness. That should be no big deal, right? Um, I will say have uh, a copy of the pinouts like I do. Like you don't gotta go big like what I got on the wall, right? You don't gotta do that. But at least have them printed out so you can like just sandy check when you're tracing out wires. Another thing is don't cut, don't just start cutting. I only wire, I only cut like two wires, three if you count the one I did on accident when I was, you know, skinning the harness. Yeah, don't, don't just start cutting. No, I didn't cut, like I said, I only cut two wires and they were just going in the power brick because they were connected and they both had to come out anyway. So why deep in it? I just snipped it. Like you're going to have to rewire your power into a fuse block anyway. So but yeah, don't just start cutting any, anything. A lot of guys, you know, they'll just push the pin through through the connector and cut, cut it off and then pull it out. Don't do that, just lift the little tab, pull the connector out. Cause you might need a wire to repin some. Like, so I got a bunch of extra wires now, pins on them. So when I go to pin in um, my flex fuel sensor, I got wire to do that. <clears throat> so yeah, don't, don't just start cutting stuff. Other than that, man, this is pretty simple. I know you can like buy the China harnesses for like 80 bucks, right? Um, I bought them, they're fine, but like if you have an old harness, just take a couple couple hours, you know, a couple nights and make it happen. So yeah, uh, that's the video, fellas. Now this video really wasn't about this engine, it was really about doing a wiring harness, but if you want to check out this Iron Duke engine that we're using this LSECU to run, you know, check out this video here, be down in the description maybe. And uh, this is Tall Garage, and uh, if you guys thought this was good, you know, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tall Garage out.